into it. The first thing I'm going to do is, and I'm going to cut this uh, mannequin mostly dry, but the nape section I am going to cut wet, so I'm just going to move her up here for a sec. Hopefully that stays. And I'm going to take my comb, and I'll just go off her natural part. So Erica is parting her hair there today, and I just went off her natural part to the high point of her head, to her crown. Now I'm just gonna section from that high point of the head in up there to right behind her ear, and I'll show you that in just a second. I'm just gonna clip this front part away, out of my way. All right, and then I'm gonna repeat that on the other side. Hi, everyone. Hi, Houston. Okay, and then again from the high point of the head down to behind the ear. If you're looking for, if you ever have trouble sectioning, uh, I do like to take a comb that has a little bit of a single uh, comb. I can't think of what this part is called, but you know what I mean. And I like to take my index finger of my opposite hand and I'm gonna place it underneath, like right where I want the comb to go. So I want the comb to end up here. So I'm gonna place this opposite finger there. For some reason, it's then easier to connect this hand to that hand. Hi, Stefan. So again, from the high point, and I'm just shooting for my finger. And once I feel that hit the tip, then I can just separate it like that. All right, and we're gonna section that away up to the front. So nothing too complicated yet. Now when I get to the back, I am gonna go right down the center. So again, I'm taking my opposite finger and placing it right in the center. On the mannequin, it's really easy because there's a usually a mark here in the center, so I'm gonna place it right there. And I'm gonna take my comb, make a straight line right down to my fingertip and section it in half, just like that. Now, one common thing that I see, oops, I'm gonna drop that, that I see when we are cutting this nape section is that say, like let's for instance, pretend that we're gonna cut an A-line bob. So a question that I get is, well, when do I decide where to start really angling that bob down? And a lot of the times you wanna start, or most people, and this is what I used to do as well, is I also used to angle the nape. So I thought that I would have to start high center and then angle this section. So one thing that I've learned though, is that if I just square this off, and I'm gonna show you how I do that and cut horizontal, and I'm not gonna worry about this nape section of the hair creating my line really at all for the overall shape of say an A-line. Because what happens is if you leave this corner here longer, you know the common problem we get behind the ears is build up, right? Or it's like bulk, I should say, not build up, but bulk behind the ears, we call them, I call them dog ears, right? So you get this heavy section here right behind the ears. That's because you're dealing with nape hair typically and you're not cutting this off, but this side hair here, it doesn't have that section of hair underneath to build that bulk that this hair back here has. So we have, you have to look at it as like, we have this extra hair back here. So what I found is I like to kind of almost take that hair out, not, it's still gonna provide a little bit of line in the center back, but we're gonna take it out. So you don't have to angle this section either is where I was going with that. So let me section this. So it can almost be like straight across. You can put it slightly on an angle if they're a little bit have less density, but it can just really go straight across here, however you want to section that. I'm just gonna clip this up out of the way. Get that out of the way. And I'm just gonna make sure this is even on both sides. All right, that looks good. And I'm just gonna take a big clip so this is gonna be my nape section here. Now another little tip I have for when you're cutting this nape section is, or a question I get often is, how high do I take this line here? 
Like how high up or how low do I section this? So a good rule of thumb is like, if they have average hair, so it probably is like a finer, a finer texture, um, but they have a lot of density. So that's, that's my hair. So like, I do have like finer, skinnier strands, but I have a lot of hair follicles on my scalp. So I have a lot of density and that's why I shave like a lot of my hair cut out so that this hair can collapse on top of it. Otherwise it would stack out because there's, there would be so much extra hair underneath. So if you are dealing with a good amount of density, you can take this line a little bit higher, right? You can go like right up, up to the occipital. If they don't have a lot of density and their hair is super fine, so, and they want to have a strong line. If you want to create a strong line with someone that doesn't have a lot of density, but you still want to get this bob to curve under perfectly, you still want to do this part to the nape, especially for these corners here. But what you can do is you can move this hair down. Let me show you, for, for example. I can move this down so I'm cutting off less here okay and now this will be part of the line up above but we're going to start here and i want to talk about cutting horizontally so because this girl is long let's right off the bat just get rid of some of this length so we can easily put this in our fingers okay so a lot of the times when we're cutting a nape section we tend to take a vertical center parting, right? This is how I originally learned to cut this, especially like when it, when I was in beauty school, I learned to cut 0, 45, 90. But my 45 is different than your 45, um, or you might go 46 or 47, you know? It's like really hard to tell of like exact angles on a head. So this is how I was taught in school, was to take a vertical subsection, place my hands, and I'm gonna cut down like this which I can do that okay and then comb it down and then what I'm gonna do is work to the left and then come back and work to the right now the thing about that is is we're oh most of us are dominant with one hand or the other it's a very small percentage of people that are ambidextrous where they use both hands equally and even so you're probably choosing only one hand to cut with because you're either gonna buy right or left-handed shears. So when we have our dominant hand, the way I cut it moving to the left is never, or hardly ever, I'd love to see it <laughs> if you can do this, is never gonna be the same as when we're going to the right. So a problem I would run into is that my sides would always be off, which is fine, you can correct it after. Um, but what I found was it was just because the angle of my elbow and the hair because I am dominant that way. So I learned to cut this section instead, and I'm actually going to turn her here horizontally. All right. So here we go. So I have my guide. You can do one section as a guide. You're not going to see me, but I'm going to put, let me tilt this down so you guys can really see this. I'm gonna cut, instead of cutting vertically like this, I'm gonna cut like this, horizontally, and I'm going to use my fingers and the back of my fingers as a guide right on her nape. So let me work to the right first. So I'm gonna scoop the hair up, and I'm going to put the hair, now the back of my fingers are touching her neck, and that's gonna be the same so I'm not having to guess where 45 is every time because I have a solid um, foundation right here using her neck. So I'm gonna put that in my fingers. Now, you can cut this however you want. You can cut it blunt. If you want it a little bit softer, you, you can point cut this. So I'm just gonna start there and then I'm gonna follow with my body and I'm gonna scoop back because I wanna show you this. I'm gonna keep everything in the strike zone. So. I grew up playing softball, so I, I use a lot of sports analogies, but the strike zone is usually here, like from the collarbones and down to your belt buckle, and it kind of forms this square zone. So when I'm cutting, um, and 
in softball, that's like, that's cause like where you can get your power if you're staying within your strike zone. So that's where ergonomically we want to stay when we're doing anything really coloring, uh, cutting, styling, you want to stay within the strike zone. So I do try to right now it's a little high so you guys can see, but typically I want to cut like right within my strike zone. So I'm still here within my strike zone and I'm going to put what section I'm cutting right in front of me. Okay, so I'm not gonna, this has no over direction in this section back here. Everything is going to follow. So again, I'm using the base of her neck as my guide because I can feel my hands touching. I'm gonna turn this way, it feels a little bit better for me right now. And I'm just gonna cut that square like that. Now let me go through this side kind of quick. All right, I'm gonna pick up my section, okay? I'm gonna follow my guide from the other side, cut, and then turn. I'm gonna turn her since, so you guys can see. Pick up my section, lay it flat, and cut. Now, this is where we're gonna start moving up and you're still gonna use her neck as a guide, but you're gonna start to come out a little bit. So I did already cut my guide. So when you're first starting to cut horizontally, you can you like cut your guide vertically first, and then we're just gonna move up and keep cutting. Now, the back of my fingers aren't touching her head anymore, but I'm following my guide from that vertical subsection. And then I just move around her head, I'm going to work to the other side and I'm going to kind of work at real speed now so we can get this done. Okay, we're going to move up another section, follow my guide, move around the head, do this all the way out. So the hair is coming an equal distance out from the hair in each section. Okay, follow my guide from the center back and we're going to take this corner out. Now on mannequins too, you're gonna like, just keep in mind that the mannequin hair in the nape does not lay the same way as human hair. So this is gonna look 10 times better on your real client because this is gonna stick out a little bit more on the nape. Also, uh, mannequins tend to have a little bit more density in here than our actual clients. So just something to keep in mind. So then I'll go up one more time and I'll just clean everything up and make sure everything is even all the way around. That side looks good. This top is a little long, so I'm gonna just clean that up. And then if the section starts to get too, too dry, well, I'm gonna just give it a little spray. Now I'm gonna release this section and just comb this right down. Okay, so I am gonna blow dry right here um, so when you see it, you can turn your volume down a little bit, but I just want to blow dry this section and then the rest I'm going to cut dry for you guys. So I'm just going to blow dry this. Now, one thing you can do is I tend to use a comb to blow dry the section or just my hands. Like you just want to force this hair to go down. We're not looking for any volume or roundness underneath. We want to keep this condensed. So here goes the blow dryer. Three, two, one. All right, so a couple keys when blow drying the nape is obviously to keep your blow dryer moving at a constant speed, like around, so you don't stay in one, two, one spot too long and burn them. And just make sure your airflow is continuously pointed down. You don't wanna blow this hair upwards or anything like that. So it's almost like you're smoothing the strands with the airflow moving down. Okay. So this is honestly like a big chunk of the haircut and everything else is gonna go so much easier. Now, a couple options here. If you're having like a, a little bit of a line here, and let me show you, because this will happen on your clients. 
a little bit of a line here. I mean, it looks pretty good because cutting horizontally gives us nice blend. But if for some reason, it's, it is a little hard to tell, but if you see that there's two things you can do to break up this line, you can either take the fine teeth of the comb and just move right into that line there and point cut and just break this up with your straight shears. Or you can take some kind of um, texture shear, blending shear, thinning shear, whatever you like. And you can also go in that way and break this up, even it all out. Whatever you need to do to get this laying nice and flat, okay? And on, on our real clients too, just keep in mind that some clients have a hairline not like the mannequin where these gross, like it like grows up and swirls out and then curves back down, like down in these corners here. I think I'm pointing to the right area, but you can picture that client where their hair grows down here. All I do is with my trimmer, I take those right off. Okay. Because when their hair swirls up and then kicks back over as their haircut grows out, those swirls are going to really affect the shape. So just take, don't be afraid to take those right out with a trimmer. Your client's not going to miss those at all. The other thing is now we're going to put in our line. And to, to be honest, on the mannequin, this looks actually halfway decent. But again, on a person, this is going to be a little bit like they're going to have like little stragglers down here and little. So now we're going to put in our line and really clean this up. So I like to start in the center back. And then I take a step back away from it and I just go around and if you can again you can do this with the trimmer you can do this with the clipper whatever you're comfortable using as a tool some clients are um, you know hell-bent that they don't want a trimmer on their neck then you can go in and you can cut this line with a shear too right you could just cut straight across okay so that's it that's what I do for my nape section. All right, let's let this down. So when we're cutting the rest of this, I'm not going to, I'm going to, I am going to cut this dry. This part I do typically cut wet. I just don't want to have to blow dry this whole mannequin for you guys um, and have you go through that. So I am going to cut her dry. So we're going to make this really quick. And if you want to cut this dry, it's totally, you can do that too. Sometimes my clients, like when they're just coming in for a touch-up haircut, is I'll actually wash them first and get them all styled and then cut their hair from there. That's what I do for my hair is I typically um, have my hair styled like this, and then I'll go to my hairdresser. She'll cut my hair, and then actually she'll put my lightener on after and then I just leave typically and I finish the rest at home because I don't want to bother her. But um, I could also just stay there and she'd do my color after and then we just blow dry it. All right, so let's just cut this foundation really quickly to show you like how easy this can be. So I'm not, even when I'm cutting this wet, I do not use, um, or I don't put in any layers or anything like that. Okay, let me wet this just a tidge because she's bouncing a little bit. So let's just cut this line and I'm going to just use the wide teeth of the comb to give me like a loose line. Okay, and then I'm going to work the other side and then I'll let down my next section. All right. And we're going to flat iron that in a minute. Okay, let's let down our next section. Um, it's a little too thick. So I am going to subdivide this. And sectioning, like how much you take in each section, really depends on their density and their thickness, right? So as long as you, I'm not saying you have to do like 10 sections back here but just section out what you can control. So if they have like only 10 strands of hair on their head, you don't have to, like if you wanna cut it in one thing, there's nothing that says you can't, 
just know the foundations of cutting first and know the rules before you break them. But I don't know. I used to be a rule follower and now I'm like, hmm, which ones can I like bend? <laughs> so I'm just going to follow my guide underneath here. And I'm still using the wide teeth of the comb to kind of give me this like looser feel. And just cut little by little. But even too, like even if I didn't want to use like a comb, I could freehand this. I think sometimes as hairdressers, we don't trust our eyes enough. We forget that these are like one of our greatest tools and we are like artists. So again, don't be afraid to, I'm actually gonna turn my flat iron on. But yeah, don't be afraid to like go outside the box a little bit because that's, you know, getting outside your comfort zone is where the growth is and where we can sometimes learn. And sometimes it works and sometimes we learn. But at least we're continually challenging ourselves. So I could just freehand if I want this. It's not a big deal. I want to show you guys how easy and girls, how easy this can be. All right. So I do want to, because I had blow dried her so straight, I want to curve this under a little bit like she has a blow dry off of wet hair. So all I'm doing is taking a flat iron and slightly beveling under these edges. And that is why too, I, I do typically put in my lines and my foundation on wet hair because then I can blow dry it after. All right, let's cut these sides really quick. And I'm just going to comb this straight down. Okay. So actually I just did, I don't know if you noticed what I did to the mannequin, but when I was cutting her nape and back here, what I do is I do tend to tip my client forward in the chair. And that's one, especially for the nape section. So it's easier for me to get in there and work and cut. And then two, when I tip them forward and I'm cutting this top section here, if I really want all this to start to bevel over, when I tip them forward, this will create a little extra length here so that when they come back up, there we go. And then when I am going to cut in front of the ear, right, I don't want their head to be down because it's going to create over direction forward. I want them at this point to be level because our clients aren't going to walk around with their head down. Hopefully, hopefully not. Okay. Let's take a section out to cut and just clip that up. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I will try to look at the screen and catch them. Um, if you do get a little static, like, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but a little static, like I love using, the smooth down to like kind of help me with that. All right, so let's just cut a line here. I've combed it out. Um, let's just go kind of like, we can go slightly angled. I mean, really this is where you decide where you want the angle and you can cut and then recomb if you need. All right. There's our first line. Let's move a little bit faster in real time here. All right, so once we get past, once we're above this occipital, dropping hair from above the parietal, I mean, then we're gonna have to start to think about our fringe, okay? And so if we want to leave extra length there, you might over direct this back a little bit when you're cutting this fringe area. So let's just cut, comb it straight down a little bit more frizz or um, static coming out here. So again, I'm just going in with my smooth down. I'm a little bit distance away and I just give it a quick little spray and comb that down. And then let's follow our guide from underneath. Hopefully my, oh, my big head's in the way not in the way. 
Okay, and when we get to this front section, we can either keep cutting, and if we want to leave length, extra length, we can angle down, or if we want, we can gather in our hands here over direct. We can also point cut this. If you want it super blunt, then cut it blunt. Really, there's so many different options, and it all is just dependent on your client. All right, so let's start there. Turn her around and do this other side really quick. Now, let's go there. And for this, there's a couple different ways that you can do it. I can go in here and I can just connect starting from right in between there, or I can take my body and then flip my shear over. and cut down this way, okay? So there's one section, let's drop our other section. Now one thing um, that I should mention, if your client throws their part around on their bobs, cut off a center part. If they only part in one place the entire time, then cut off the one part. But if they tend to flip their hair back and forth, then cut off the center. That way everything will be balanced. And then help them understand that when they flip it to one side, more than likely they'll have a little bit shorter side. And I, I really like that anyways. And so they can kind of like mix up their haircut. All right. So then we want to check the length in the front and we can take a little bit piece of um, from our front and kind of use it as a guide so we can cut right here right because here's our little guide there move this hair back over and then here's my guide here all right so there's my guide and I'm going to follow, I have a guide underneath. I don't know if you can see it on camera. Um, and I'm just going to pull this down. There's my guide underneath. All right. And one more time. All right. I'm going to follow my guide underneath and clean that all up. Okay. So let me take the flat iron really quick and smooth her under a little bit as if I've blow dried her under and straight. Okay. Go down, there we go. All right. Just putting like a little bit of a bevel under, just so that hair isn't so stick straight on the ends. Okay, so now for the layer parts. When a client brings us a picture and they want, when you dry your clients out, what products you prefer to prep them with? Yeah, so okay, my number one, that's a great question. So my number one product that I love to prep with, oh, here it is. Um, is smoothed down on my pixie like I literally typically so when they come back from the shampoo bowl I do use um, moi moi um, sprite leave-in to cut them with but then when I'm going to blow dry them I either use one of the two for shorter hair I tend to use or if they want more volume obviously then I tend to go with bounce up if they want it a little bit sleeker uh, you know, a little bit smoother than I go with the smooth down. And then I tend to do either KHO oil or neem plant silk serum on their ends, um, mostly because I love it. And I do tend to try to use at least three products on my clients and put them in front of their station so that they can smell them, see them, and then take at least one home, but it tends to be two. Okay, so when we are cutting bobs, um, 
One thing that determines how much volume they can get here in this crown is how high you take up the length in the back. So if they want like a ton of volume here, but they want to leave this as like a longer bob, it just doesn't work, right? Because it creates kind of like this step where like they'll get this shorter layers and this bevel here, but then it will cup in right around the occipital or right below it. And then you have this like long piece underneath. So one thing is if they want, if they bring you a picture and they really want a really prominent, like deep and like really hard angle like that, then typically what I recommend is bringing this bottom line up so that you can take these layers shorter without there being that weird step in between. If they want like more of a blunt, just like longer bob, then you can leave it a little bit longer. So I'm gonna turn her this way. And I'm just gonna show you how I kind of get this to bevel in even more and how I clean it up. And then we're gonna quickly move into a pixie. So I'm gonna bring this down. I'm not gonna round these layers out because again, I don't want this to create like a weird shelf that hits right behind the occipital. I'm just gonna take this out straight out from the section I have as a 90. And I'm going to just lighten up, especially this top hair here. And if I wanted to, I could cut a little bit into the bottom. So these are all just vertical subsections. And I will say, even if I cut the foundation wet, I tend to do this on dry hair. Okay, then I'm gonna move around in uh, moving sections. Nothing is over directed. Everything is coming straight out from the section where I take it. So let me turn her here. Sorry, I bumped the thing. And I'm gonna come straight out. Again, I'm going to lighten up because it's, it's really heavy up here. So I'm not taking a ton of, I'm not really taking length, but I'm taking out some bulk of density. So the finer their hair is, the less you're gonna do this. The, the thicker their hair is, the more you have to lighten it up, right? To get it to lay right. So let's see if you can see that there. Yep, I'm just gonna deep point cut right into that and get this to lay and start to bevel under for me, okay? So everything behind the ear is coming out straight from the head. I'm not over directing up or down, just coming straight out. I'm deep point cutting and taking out some of this bulk and getting this to slight to curve under. You can already see like we don't have like a big dog ear here. Okay, so when we get to the sides though, because we, again, we don't have that nape hair underneath here, we can take these vertical sections and these sections, we actually can round a little bit more. And I'm not point cutting as deep here. This is a little bit more shallow and I want to really create a bevel here. So I'm just gonna come straight down. This is slightly rounded just at the top. I'm using the fine teeth of the comb. I'm letting some of the hair fall out. This is like the cry zone under here. I wanna keep that strong line. So I've let some hair fall out and then I start to shallow point cut and soften some of these ends and take off some of this length to create that bevel at the bottom or that graduation. All right. And the way you section these vertical subsections is all based on density and what you can control. So I'm going to go there. Yep. So I'm only going to do that side actually because I want to get into the pixie. So let me show you what the difference is. And if you have any questions on that, go ahead and throw them in there now because we're going to move on to the pixie and it's going to be really quick. And I'm going to show you guys, and I'm going to show you the difference in the two sides here. And okay, last thing though on this bob is one thing I would do after I did both sides is I would go around, oh, you can see like where the difference is, right? So here's the center back of where I've cut the bevel. And then here's the side where I haven't taken out any of the weight or graduated it or layered it at all. 
Okay, so but let's pretend both sides were done. When I finished both sides, I would get her all combed out and this is where I would refine my line. So again, I could do this with a scissor, um, just like a straight shear, or I could use a clipper or a trimmer. Now I just clean all that up so it's nice and clean. And then you can see here like the difference in taking out that nape hair, how nice this lays over top for her. And the thing about it is too, is that they'll get longevity out of their bob. It'll stay looking better for longer because this part of our hair underneath the nape grows the fastest. So when the nape gets out of shape on our client's bobs, that's when their hair just starts they like looking like crazy. But yeah, that's it for the bob. All right, so let's take this girl into a pixie. I'm big on short hair. I want everybody to be confident in cutting short hair. I am gonna do this one wet because I'm gonna show you how easy it is to blow dry this. All right, so I don't know why I dried her earlier. I had her wet, so funny. Okay, so on this scalp, I am gonna start on the back. With pixies as well, I recommend cutting like unbiased, right? Like don't cut to one side or the other, just pretend that they flip their hair back and forth and then you can customize at the very end. So we're gonna cut this, try to cut this as even as possible on both sides. Okay, so here I'm gonna start in the center back. I tend to do that a lot with a lot of my haircuts. And we're gonna go off the high point of the head. On the mannequins, it's really easy to find or I'm gonna, for her, go off her cowlick because it's like such a strong pattern on the mannequins. But sometimes our clients have this too. So you can work off a swirl pattern if they have a very strong swirl pattern. Okay, so we're gonna start in the center back. And this one's shaved underneath, so they could have shaved underneath or if they didn't want something that harsh, you could just transition this all the way down. What I would do is cut it on a 45, almost like I did for the um, nape part of the bob for the guy, but this is gonna be cut on a 45 here. So one area that I used to really mess up on these like pixies, <laughs> still cutting is I would want to, everything back here, behind the high point of the head, because it was a pixie, if I was cutting round layer pixies, I would want to round this section up. But what happens is, is when I round this and I cut this short, because this back part of the head has this occipital bone that protrudes out, versus the sides have none of that, this hair just falls flat, this protrudes out. So if I round this section here and I cut this short, well, this hair is gonna actually be shorter than this hair because this hair is protruding out off the occipital. So what I wanna make sure I do is leave myself extra length at the top. I don't wanna round this sectioning out. So I am gonna cut this at a 45. And the thing is, is that we can always adjust later once it's dry if we need to take out bulk. So I'm gonna cut it off like there. I think you can see that. And we're gonna adjust the layers later. The bulk that we're gonna create on top here. Okay, and then this is gonna work in like, I say pizza because I like pizza more than pie, but in pizza shape section. So it's gonna come from the high point of the head and the section's gonna go out like the wide part of the pizza, and that's down here. And I'm gonna work right off there, and I'm gonna form another pizza. And you can take a little bit of the previous section to help you with your guide. Let me see if I turn her this way if it's easier to see. Okay, so there's my guide between. I think you can see it's right there. You can also, like, again, you can point cut this, um, you can just cut it straight off. Whatever is easiest for you and what you want as your end result. If you want this softer, then just start with point cutting. 
instead of going in with a thinning shear at the end. So again, my pizza shaped section, I'm taking some of the previous section, I'm angled down at a 45. I'm using the back of my knuckle as a guide right on her scalp, okay. I think, can you see that? Yep, okay, good. Okay, I'm cutting right into there, making this nice and soft. And then I release the section. I comb it right down into there. And now I'm getting into right behind the ear. This will be my last section on this side. And I need to make that section a little bit more pronounced. And you can just comb this hair right out of the way. And I recommend keeping the moisture at a same level. So I'm gonna over direct this way keep the angle and then this is staying nice and close to the scalp it's almost creating that 45 and then I'm going to work to the other side I'm going to do this side kind of fast so let me turn her a little bit more so you can still see her so let, what to do with this hair here this doll hair let's section this off clearly Let's throw that, it's really heavy, but it's okay, we'll adjust it later. Because that mannequin hair is really heavy right there. So get our 45, we're leaving a little le extra length in the top. We're gonna fix it when it's dry. Okay, my next pizza slice. And I can turn this way too if it's easier. Cut my 45. I have my guide between. Now I'm moving in this direction, pizza slice. I'm just gonna cut this straight off so it's faster. All right, last one. Okay, now we're gonna leave that there. Now we're gonna come to this front section. Okay, now we're gonna take our, I was taking pizza slices in the back now everything in the front is going to move in horizontal sections across the top. And if, okay, so this girl's, this gal is already shaved underneath, but let's pretend if she wasn't, then what I would do is I would cut or I would section out this U section first, pin it up and cut the bottom underneath to the length that you want for this pixie. And then I would come up to this section, okay? So what we're doing is we're taking horizontal sections. So like this, scoot her over. I'm gonna turn it when I cut it. And we're gonna come straight across there. Okay. Now this is all in front of that high point of the head, okay? This hair isn't falling to the back. I'm gonna turn her back so you can see. And it's basically like a rectangle section like this. Let me see if you can see that. Yeah, see, it's like a rectangle. So long across the top and then as the, the width of it is as much hair as you can control. Okay, so what we're gonna do so we're gonna start out at the side. Now here's where you have to decide, is this haircut on the top, this U section going to be disconnected from the bottom or is it gonna be connected? This hair is pretty short, so we're, we're gonna have a slight disconnection here. But if it was like, let's pretend this hair was long, then you can just line it up with what would, would be under here. And we're going to cut right into it and then we're gonna round. So we're kind of creating this like arch, like this even arch over the top of the head. These are round layers, okay? So we're gonna pick this hair up. You can point cut this if you want it a little bit softer. And this is just gonna be the same. I'm just using hair from the previous section to determine my length. And really what determine my length too is like the sides, right? And if you're scared, you can start longer. Okay, so there's section one. Now we're gonna go across another section, across the top, and you're gonna take some from the previous section. 
So you have a guide right behind. This is coming straight off the head where the hair lives. Okay, so you're gonna come over to your side, point cut that. You have a guide behind, you have a guide right beside. Okay, point cut, point cut, and then you're gonna round, you're gonna keep rounding down to the other side. Okay, so your hand is staying the same distance away from the scalp the whole time. And that, like if you're new to haircutting, that comes with feel too. Like you'll just start to get a feel for your hand distance. All right, let's keep going. I'm gonna go a little bit more real speed so we can blow dry this and wrap it up. So while I'm cutting this, one thing, because I'm about to get there, to start thinking about is what do they want the front to look like? Did they, first of all, did they bring you a picture? I personally feel that pictures are one of the best ways to communicate with our clients uh, because we don't speak the same language. So if you don't speak the same language and you're trying to explain something to the other, it's gonna be a lot harder where images are universal so really encourage your clients to bring you a picture. Pick spots like, okay, well, what do you like about the bang area? What do you like about the sides? Do you like the sides flatter? Do you like it to be more round? Do you like the crown a little bit flatter or do you want more volume on top? Are you looking more for more texture or would you like it a little bit sleeker? Pick points of the picture that you can get them to answer on. So like for the fringe, if she wanted like a longer fringe, right here is where I'd start like, right, this hair here, I'd start over directing back to maintain length in the front. But if she just wants a short, short fringe and this to all be even with the top, then you can just keep going straight off the head where you were. But let's for this sake pretend she wants her fringe a little bit longer. So I'm gonna over direct this back is a little bit long or dry I mean I do like to maintain the same amount of like moisture throughout my whole haircut get more uh, even results that way so let's over direct this back in her little pixie to her previous section okay so I have a guide from behind I have a guide right beside I'm over directing back to maintain a little length in her fringe, coming all the way over to the opposite side and connecting this down to the previous section. All right, so let's start to, to comb this into place once we get it cut. All right, now we have the foundation of this cut laid in. Here's where like if they style to one side or the other, you're probably going to teach them how to blow dry to one side or the other. But I'm going to start with bounce up spray. One, because it smooths their cuticle and still gives them like a nice finish. Um, but this, for pixies, because the hair is so short, you can't use a ton of like, I don't know, tools to like give yourself maximum volume. I mean, you can. You can use iron and a tiny round brush. But our clients, what's the thing they always tell to, say to us is, I wish I could style my hair like you do, which they're never going to be able to no matter how much you teach them. But it's always important to try to like help our clients understand their hair better and help them style it and give them something easy that they can take home and do because they'll appreciate it so much more. So I do start with bounce up spray um, and then I'll finish with a little taffy. So here goes the blow dryer again. So if you want to turn down your volume, I won't say anything while I'm blow drying. The only thing is like, you're going to see me really use my fingers to manipulate the hair. I'm going to put a little tension on her hair to create volume. And it's all about root control in a pixie. Okay. So if I want this to have volume in the crown, then I know I need to focus this root coming back and up, okay? So I'm gonna start with 
root control and then work out to the ends. Another like good little tip when we're teaching our clients how to style their hair and to smooth it is like you could just do like a little pump of neem plant silk serum and then you have that kind of on your hands like as you're manipulating and drying their hair too and it's going to really like give them something smooth without using a brush so here we go with the blow dryer three two one and you i use my nails i have nails but even if you just have fingertips for this back crown part I don't want it to have like a ton of volume on the part be behind falling to the occipital. So I don't give that as much volume. I more use my fingers like a comb. All right, starting to give her like a little bit of root. Okay, and I'm kind of like using my tension to smooth the hair. Again, keep the blow dryer moving. I, I guess I lied when I said I wasn't going to talk during the room, so hopefully you can hear me. On the sides, I tend to keep it a little bit flatter, not as voluminous, so that I um, don't round out their hair, because that makes it feel like a, like a roller set. When you really round out both sides, you want to keep the sides a little bit more sleek. I can push, I can over direct the hair now the opposite way. And then as it starts to get dry, let's start to lay it in the place. So let's just pretend she likes to style it over this way. Oh yes, Erica. Pixie looks fabulous on you. All right, we're almost done. See, I got a lot of volume, nice volume in the crown. Keeping the sides nice and flat. And then if she does have like a little bit longer hair here in the front, which I want to trim this a little bit more, you can always take, which I didn't bring, but you can take, let me just grab it actually, with a little round brush. If the hair is long enough. And blow dry this right under. And it's still pretty short this longer hair in the front here. I don't want to give her too much uh, volume in the fringe either. And then I just, yeah, I tend to go in and finish with my hand. All right. Last part. Okay, let's start in the center back again. I'm going to turn her around so you can see her. I'm going to take my blending shear on this. Now it's a little bit heavy here, which is what I want, right? I would rather be safe than sorry. I'm going to just start to take my blending shear and soften this up just a little bit, but without it layering it too much so that I don't get like a weird um, double bump, I call it, where the short hair hits the occipital and then hair goes down below it. I'm just gonna start to blend this side. Just lighten this up a little bit, comb it back into place, see if I'm getting the volume I want, the blend I want there. I'd repeat on the other side. So I'm just lifting the hair, combing it back into place, constantly checking my shape. Yeah, and I like how that's like blending more with the bottom. And she's getting enough volume in here. And it's kind of like keeping the shape round, right? So it's like rounding it, but then this all hugs, which is what I want instead of it beveling and then like creating another bevel there. So I can do that on these sides too. The blending shear if I want. I can take my straight shear and point cut that. So I would just work the side like that. Let's talk about the front really quick. I'm not going to finish the other side. But here's where you can also like 
if you know the rules, break them. So I left myself a little bit of length in the front. For me, it's a little bit still too long. And you can see that there's kind of like this heaviness here. So here's where I'm just going to, again, trust my eyes as an artist and as a stylist and start to trim this away and really cut it into place. Sometimes I, I think we forget that, yeah, our eyes are our biggest asset and that we don't have to have a guide every single time because the hair is not the same on both sides. So let's see, I'm almost there. I'm liking her texture in here. I could even like break this texture up, sliding right across, giving her a little bit of internal texture there. Let's see this way. It's a little heavy here, like if she likes to wear her hair on both sides. Then I'll check the hair in both directions. Okay, I'm liking that. All right, and there's just these little bit, if she, of hair on this side, little stragglers, that I want to flow a little bit more. All right, it's getting pixie-ish. And I'm going to bring this to this side. And that's what I do. I just keep going around, using my eye, seeing where I like, seeing what looks too heavy to me. I pinch and I surface plane. And so I'm just keeping constant light pressure on my shear. My thumb's moving at a constant rate. And I start to just play with the hair get it into different spots, make sure nothing feels too heavy. This side's a little, needs a little texture and breaking it up. And remember to educate your clients too on product, right? Is like a lot of the times when our picture, our pictures are showing us a client, when our clients are showing us a picture, I mean, it's like 90% styling. So just remind them, I mean, we could fiddle with a haircut too forever. So just remember, put the shears down when it's time. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit, just to finish this off, a little bit of taffy. I like this because it has a, a hold of six, so it's still like pliable. And just a little bit there. And I'm actually gonna just warm it up a little bit in my hand. and then fully emulsify it in my hands. And I don't know, I like taffy. I like the size of the product tube. I like the way it feels in the hair. It's not like too heavy, it's still pliable. It's lighter, but still has like a good hold. You can like, if they like it, like super choppy and PC. That's uh, one way like I like to use it is to show them how they can piece it out, but I can also make it blend a little bit more too. And I just finish them off and show them how to style it. I think I want this to go this way. Yeah, that's it. That was a lot. That hour went by fast. I'm sad. It's over. But yeah, that's it, you guys. So today we went over the bob and my favorite part is like kind of undercutting that nape so they can get like a nice bevel underneath clean lines and then i gave you guys a really quick pixie don't overcomplicate it you guys got this don't be afraid to cut short hair especially when your client is ready for it and yeah 